Tonight, we check on the state of the league and the state of football fans as Grey Cup weekend nears. We're all together and winning is our aim. And in the face of a healthcare system in crisis, paramedics find themselves battling their own breakdowns. Plus, Hundreds participate in a citizenship ceremony, one of the largest since the pandemic began. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It's Friday, November 18th. CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. The countdown to the kickoff is on and the atmosphere is heating up as fans arrive to cheer on their teams for the Grey Cup. The Toronto Argonauts take on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on Sunday and having a sea of blue in the Queen City is proving pretty tough for diehard Ryder fans. Sam Sampson has more. Green is the colour, football is the game, we're all together and winning is our aim. It's all fun and games until Saskatchewan Rough Rider fans consider putting aside their loyalty to cheer for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The thought of cheering for the Bombers on Rider soil makes me feel... Uh, very ill. Very ill. Sick to my stomach. Like, worse than COVID. <laughs> and I work in healthcare. Worse than COVID. The Riders didn't make the final this year, so these green fans are cheering for the Argos. Oh no, we can't cheer for Winnipeg. The fact that Winnipeg is actually playing in our stadium. <laughs> it's 1950, the year of the great mud bath. Take a look at that swan. The last time the Argos and the Bombers met in a Grey Cup was more than 70 years ago, the so-called Mud Bowl. Fast forward to this weekend and these teams are hungry. The Argos haven't won a Grey Cup since 2017. Winnipeg is chasing their third in a row. Oh, the three-peat. I don't even talk about it too much. I don't want to jinx it. This lifelong Bomber fan sticks with the team through the best and the worst. We're still the underdog and we're still fighting to prove that we are, uh, we're good enough to be there. You said to me five years ago, could you see the Argos playing the Bombers? They wouldn't have picked that on, on anybody's bingo card. Author Paul Woods is packing his warmest Argos jacket for the game. He's written extensively about the team. The Argos have won the last six Grey Cups they've been to. And so quite often, like this year, they've been the underdog, but they've won. Thousands of fans will be here at Mosaic Stadium on Sunday. And even though Saskatchewan isn't playing in the game, they're still winning in a way. Hotels across the city are booked up. Restaurants are packed. Officials say this is a welcome economic boost after two years of pandemic shutdowns, even if they have to bring in blue to do it. Sam Sampson, CBC News, Regina. Our Adam Hunter is at arguably the hottest spot for Grey Cup festivities this weekend. Adam, where are you tonight? That's right, Natasha. I'm at the, the hottest spot, the place to be this weekend. And really for all Grey Cups, Ryderville has become uh, sort of the destination no matter where the Grey Cup is. But it's especially significant when it is here in Saskatchewan. Earlier today, we heard from CFL Commissioner Randy Ambrosi. He met with fans and media, two separate forums. And he said that the league is trying to get that elusive 10th franchise in order to balance the league to 10 teams and also help move up the schedule and have the Great Cup held a little bit earlier in November. Uh, one thing that we have had uh, as, as a conversation with our board, very positive conversation, was thinking about our season through the lens of expansion. That makes expansion such a big priority for us because we know that right now, as you all know, that we play our we play our 18-game uh, regular season we played in 21 weeks, and that's because we have an odd number of teams, and that means every there's one team that's having a bye every weekend. We know if we can if when we land our 10th team, when we land our 10th team, then we can play our regular season in 19 weeks. So this year's Great Cup, for example, would have been on November the 6th. Um, and so, Dave, that's our focus right now. Our focus is to use expansion as a tool to advance our game. So what happens then when you don't have as, uh, you don't have as many buys and you don't have a team having a buy every weekend is a lot more of your games will be played between the kickoff of the season in June, early June, and your Labor Day games. Fewer games played from Labor Day, uh, you know, Labor Day into the fall and a Grey Cup, a much earlier Grey Cup. So that's our strategy right now is to focus 
our time and energy on finding that expansion franchise, finding that expansion opportunity, and using that to uh, to really lock in our season, uh, you know, to an earlier date in November. And Natasha, another thing that the commissioner said, another thing the commissioner said today, Natasha, was that the league is going to have the four playoff games before the Grey Cup game on Saturday and keep the Grey Cup game on Sunday. And that's what we're here for is the Grey Cup game. But before we get to that, I'm here with Darren Anaka, who's with the organizing committee. You're uh, in charge of the countless volunteers we see in these uh, bright green jackets. People are just streaming into Ryderville. Darren, it's been a big wait for the Grey Cup. It's canceled for 2020. It's here now. What's it like to finally be here on Friday night of the Great Cup Week? It's quite humbling. We've had a, a fantastic planning group working on this for three and a half years. These people have brought their professional skills to the, to the project. They've done an incredible job. And the heart of the CFL in Saskatchewan is alive and well. What should people expect this weekend? There's so much going on. There's so much to see just down here on the real campus. What are you looking forward to? What should what should people know about? There, there are so there is something for absolutely everybody here. We have toddlers right through teenagers doing all sorts of age appropriate events, and then of course we have all the party rooms, which are basically blowing us away with the attendance, uh, with the you know just the spirit of the CFL is it's alive and well here in Regina this weekend, and uh, I can only expect amazing things tomorrow when this weather finally breaks and, and we can have a lot more fun, a drone show tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. It's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, unfortunately, the wind has canceled the drone show for the past couple of days. It's gonna be on tomorrow. Uh, what's it like, just the buzz and the excitement in the air? Ryderville, we've seen the buses, the shuttles, uh, have people empty out, they're piling in here all dressed up. What's that like? <laughs> well, you've been a part of it uh, as well. And it's infectious. When you, when you get to the site, you walk around, you can't help but walk around with a big smile on your face because everywhere you look, it is just a warm, fuzzy feeling of CFL love. It is absolutely, it, like I said, infectious and just so much fun. Darren, thanks so much for your time. Good luck and congratulations. Thank you very much. That's Dar Darren Anaka with the organizing committee. And I can tell you that Ryderville will be pumping all weekend up until kickoff on Sunday. And that's when the Bombers and the Argos take the field just behind me here at Mosaic Stadium. Natasha? Thanks for that, Adam. That's CBC's Adam Hunter reporting live in Regina tonight. It may be the main focus of the Grey Cup, but it isn't all about football. There are also family-friendly events where you can learn about our province and, of course, Indigenous culture and history play a big part in that. Wanaskewin Heritage Park has set up an exhibit inside the Ag X building. Families can look at Indigenous artifacts, sit inside a teepee, see hoop dances and relay races. The exhibit is open until tomorrow at 9 p.m. The Great Cup is on Treaty 4 territory, um, so it's important to have that representation. I think Wanaskewin for people to come up to our booth and see um, what we uh, can show to people, um, kind of some of the uh, education that we can give to people. I just think um, that's really special that we can do that here. And while you're at the festival, you'll probably see lots of these. This is the official Grey Cup scarf. It was designed by a Gwich'in artist in Regina. Brandy Jones spent months creating the design. She modeled it after the traditional beadwork she saw growing up in the province. Jones says she was thrilled to be asked to create the design. Oh, I feel extremely privileged that it was, uh, I would say that like as far as an artist goes, I feel like that's pretty much every artist's dream uh, to be asked something like that. Um, and especially uh, somebody that loves the riders too, like it's just, I would say a dream come true. The scarves are hard to miss at the festival. Volunteers are giving them out for free at the entrance to many venues. Landlords are calling it an alarming trend. They say the recent jump in rental and utility costs is leading to evictions among low-income renters. Rentals.ca is reporting that rents across Saskatchewan are up an average of 9.7% year over year. By the end of next month, most people could also be paying $17 more for power and natural gas. As temperatures cool and utility rates rise, many bills could go unpaid. It's kind of a perfect storm 
cost of living crisis that we're seeing across the country and the rental housing industry is not immune to that. Our members are seeing drastic increases on everything from doors to windows and now power and natural gas and ultimately we need to pass on those costs to our customers, our renters uh, and we do so through proper rate increases um, but ultimately it, it's really quite an unfortunate circumstance so uh, unfortunately those evictions are going to increase. Chuckett says inconsistency with financial assistance benefits is also contributing to evictions. That includes the Saskatchewan Income Support Program. The province used to pay directly for the rent and utilities of those on the program. Now that's only the case for people deemed to be at risk of homelessness. We're facing a province-wide shortage of ambulances, and that means people are waiting a long time for emergency response. The union that represents Saskatchewan health care workers says these services are backed up due to packed emergency rooms. And that's happening because Saskatchewan is short on doctors and nurses. Now, paramedics are increasingly facing mental health problems. Laura Sharpaletti reports. This is Peaches here. Samuel Colin spends these days tending to his rescue animals. He has always been a caregiver. Colin trained to be a paramedic at age 19. He wanted medical training in case his father, a severe alcoholic, ever needed help. Now 25, Colin is the one who needs help. He's been at home on mental health leave since September. The pressure has been building on paramedics like him since the pandemic. For quite a while, they were actually using the EMS garages for um, patients to basically be in there on beds because there was no room in the waiting room, there's no room in the hallway, there's no beds available. 10-4, just be advised, we have no units available. Lots of calls holding. We'll get to this one again. On one recent day, Regina was fully staffed with 11 ambulances and unable to respond to 135 calls. Because of Saskatchewan's backed up health care system, many EMS workers find themselves waiting with their patients until they're admitted, unable to respond to calls. This Saskatoon psychiatrist says paralyzing paramedics who are trained to help leads to mental health issues. Let's put them in the middle of an ER where they're hearing people in distress. They're seeing all the people who aren't getting their needs met. We're inherently making them powerless. The stress has worsened Colin's bipolar disorder. I wasn't sleeping. I would be awake for three or four days at a time uh, when I was off shift. And um, it ruined my life, honestly. Eventually, Colin couldn't keep going to his job. The calls that we were doing and the things that we were seeing, and I was, uh, I was not functional. Saskatchewan's Ministry of Health tells CBC News it empathizes with what EMS workers are going through right now. Since 2019, the province has provided funding through the Health Authority to establish a mental health program. Also in 2019, the Workers' Compensation Board established a psychological injuries unit to help provide compensation and medical attention for workers as well as specialized support support Colin is using, along with writing out his thoughts, anything to calm his mind. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News, Regina. November is Radon Action Month in Saskatchewan. The radioactive gas is Canada's leading cause of cancer for people who don't smoke. Saskatchewan has some of the highest levels of the gas worldwide. Recent testing in Weyburn showed more than 100 homes tested had higher than recommended levels. The province's Lung Association says it's important to test your home and to tackle the issue if you find higher than normal levels. To help homeowners with the cost of that fix, Lung Saskatchewan will provide up to $1,000 to help pay for remediation. People gathered in Saskatoon today to officially become Canadian citizens. 306 people took the oath and sang O Canada at the ceremony. Two federal members of Parliament and Betty Nippy Albright, who's the MLA for Saskatoon Centre, were there waving Canadian flags in support. It feels awesome. It has been a long journey. Um, I've been in Canada for almost nine, ten years, and um, 
saw uh, ups and downs and finally got a citizenship. It's very honorable and good feeling. <laughs> Today's ceremony was one of the largest in-person ceremonies that's taken place in the province in two and a half years. No matter which team you cheer for, the Grey Cup Festival grounds have a space for you to party it up this weekend. The Lions, Stamps, Bombers, Eastern Canadian teams and even a consolation party room for Maritimers can be found at the Cooperator Centre. But as you heard earlier tonight, our crew is at Ryderville in the International Trade Centre. Weather specialist Ethan Williams will join us from there after the break. Welcome back. Recently, we've been telling you about concerns over people being caught outside in the cold. Now, the city of Regina has made a bus available for people to warm up overnight. You can find this bus near Mobile Crisis Services on the 1600 block of 11th Avenue. It's meant for people needing urgent shelter. It's accepting visitors seven nights a week from 8.15 p.m. to 7.45 a.m. Regina Transit and the local fire department are surveying the core area each night and the bus might move to where it is needed most. This weather update is brought to you by Capital Ford Lincoln. 22 model clear out is on now. Weather specialist Ethan Williams has been taking in a ton of the Grey Cup festivities this week. He's out again tonight. Where are you? Where are we finding you this evening, Ethan? Well, I am here at Ryderville, Natasha, in the International Trade Center. The party just getting started here. We've uh, had some cheer teams performing and uh, some concerts will be taking place a little bit later this evening. And if you're coming down, it's actually not too bad of an evening. In fact, let's take a look at uh, our temperature change since yesterday yesterday afternoon we were looking at uh, minus temperatures on this board actually yesterday but today we're going the opposite direction warming up significantly in the last 24 hours or so and current temperatures right now kind of hovering around that minus 10 mark for the most point in uh, in uh, most of south and central saskatchewan temperatures uh, not all that bad at all taking a look at radar and satellite we did have some snow moving through the south of the province this afternoon in and around regina that has since moved out we are seeing some increasing cloudiness, though, as we head through the evening hours tonight, and that cloud is likely going to stick around. We could see some lingering flurries in south and central. Wind gusts going to start to diminish overnight. They'll still be pretty breezy through the evening. Tomorrow, we are looking at a system, a low pressure system, bringing some snow to northeastern Saskatchewan. The south should start to get some clearing through the day, and that system is going to move out actually pretty quickly. The north uh, going to see the end of the snowfall probably by about uh, 8 or 9 o'clock tomorrow evening and then heading into the Grey Cup game Sunday the north another round of snowfall with that low pressure system but uh, as we head toward game time at 5 o'clock we are looking at pretty clear conditions in southern Saskatchewan so should be pretty nice. For the north of the province this weekend we're looking for anywhere between 5 and 10 centimeters of snow maybe locally heavier amounts in places like Stony Rapids or really kind of along that very far north part of the province. That should clear up as we head into the beginning of next week. Wind gusts today through the province. It's been another pretty gusty day. Again, those northwest winds really picking up. And we are going to see a little bit of a change in visibility, of course, with that snowfall still falling. And uh, with that wind picking up, visibility could drop at periods through the evening tonight. So just keep that in mind. Our wind gusts going to diminish, as I mentioned, tonight in southern Saskatchewan. Through most of the province, we'll have a fairly calm night, I think. And then heading into tomorrow, gusts not all that bad, between 20 and 30 kilometers an hour. For the game on Sunday, southern Saskatchewan gusts, probably the highest will be around 40 kilometers an hour. Backing off, though, as uh, we start to head in to uh, the game around 5 or so. Next few days in Regina, a very nice warm-up in store. Look at that. We've been uh, forecasting a nice day on game day Sunday for quite some time. And it looks like it is going to pan out for us, albeit maybe a little bit breezy. But again, I think by game time, we'll be fine. And that's not it for the warm up. We're going to see that nice uh, warm weather continuing through the week. Maybe some flurries on Wednesday, but we will be at the freezing mark 
for Saskatoon. If you're heading down uh, to Regina on Sunday, uh, that Highway 11 corridor should be quite nice. And then uh, temperature is going to be right at or just above normal for this time of year. We'll see some sunny conditions on Thursday and Friday. So the weather gods and the football gods, Natasha, smiling on this game on, uh, on Sunday. It's going to be quite nice. That's great to hear. Thanks, Ethan. You've heard of cat burglars, but what about an owl burglar? And this one might be a repeat offender. When a couple in Victoria found a friend's house in disarray, they thought the place had been broken into. But right before they called police, they noticed an owl perched on the dining room chandelier. Last Thursday, police were called to a different home and found a suspiciously similar owl there. A bit of a whodunit, if you ask me. We'll be back after the break. People in parts of western New York State woke up to snow nearly a meter deep today. That could almost double by late Sunday. Road travel advisories and outright bans were in place this morning. Several centimeters of snow have been falling every hour, but the snowfall has been uneven. One town located just 40 kilometers from areas with the highest snow banks reported about three centimeters of snow. Many things are still shutting down as a result. Most flights at Buffalo's airport were canceled and the city's schools were closed. Back to Ethan now with one last look at our forecast. Hopefully we're not looking at a storm like the one they're experiencing in New York. No, thankfully, uh, Mother Nature going to spare us this Grey Cup weekend, Natasha. And uh, let's take a look at tomorrow's forecast in Regina. At 8 a.m., we will be cloudy in the Queen City. We'll be at minus 11. That wind chill making it feel around minus 15. But by the time we uh, hit the noon hour, we should be above the minus 10 mark. Again, mostly cloudy conditions. We'll get some clearing as we head through the day. In Saskatoon, you'll also start the day at minus 11, but you'll be a little bit clearer and uh, you'll be seeing that wind chill around minus 18 as well. And then some nice clear skies as we head toward the noon hour, minus nine, that wind chill still around uh, minus 15 or so. All right, now the forecast everyone's been waiting for, the big great cup. We are going to be sitting at minus two under mostly clear conditions. Natasha, great day ahead for that game. Thanks for that, Ethan. He's called the boss and he weighs around 300 kilograms. That's about 660 pounds, making him one of the biggest grizzly bears to roam Banff National Park. He has survived being hit by a train and has killed and eaten his rivals. Last weekend, a nature photographer managed to capture him through his camera lens. He's, he's beautiful, he's magnificent, and he's very large. He's a massive creature. I've, I've seen a lot of different bears over my lifetime, and, and this bear is really healthy right now. I didn't know that it was the boss, obviously, when I saw the tracks. When he popped his head up from digging behind that log, yeah, I knew right away, because the boss on his right side, uh, he, he's missing part of his ear. He was bear number 122, and I think there was an ear tag there, and at some point it must have got pulled out, and that's how he's, he's very uh, recognizable. This is our patriarch of the valley. You know, he's, he's most likely the father around 70% of the cubs, and to see him going into hibernation so healthy, it's good news for our grizzly bear populations out here in the valley. That's it for us tonight. Glenn Reed will be back with more local news at 11. Thanks for watching and have a great night.